Alright, what is up? So next up on our tutorial list is this man on the left, Mr. Hawkeye. Um, obviously, you know, best known for his zoning. He does have some somewhat decent pressure, um, good mix-up options. Obviously, there are far more effective options out there if you're looking for a rushdown character, but he does have them, so you don't have to just, like, think of him like, oh, I have to zone with this dude. He does have other options. So, but before I get into all his zoning options and whatnot, let's just go through his normals real quick. I mean, he has a standard set of normals, more or less. Um, his notable ones, I mean, number one is his standing medium, humongous hitbox. Just a fantastic hitbox. It's just a great mid-range poke, and you confirm it into either, you know, a slide as you saw. Oh, okay, you actually can't confirm it that far away. But it's forward heavy if you're close enough. I mean, obviously the best confirm possible is that one. And then also, you know, like if they block it, you can just cancel and do his poison tip to make it safe, etc. But that's probably his, like, his best mid-range poke aside from his slide. I mean, obviously the slide, as you can see, is just fantastic. It has a great hitbox, pretty damn quick overall. Um, but yeah, other than that, there's really no, nothing not notable to his pokes, um, in terms of their range. The thing that you do need to know about his pokes, however, is you actually cannot chain into his crouching heavy. As you see, I try to go into his crouching heavy right there. Just try to do a regular crouching chain. You can't do it. You just cannot chain into his crouching heavy for whatever reason. You can chain from his crouching heavy into his launcher, so that does work. However, there's just really no reason to use it, because his slide is a far, has far more range, just a better low overall. Um, and I mean, it's just, it's, his slide is a better poke overall. But so if you do want to combo off this crouching chain, you either have to use his forward heavy, oops, his forward heavy move, like that. Uh, it is also, again, you can cancel with the launcher. Or you can use this slide, which again, you can cancel with the launcher. They're both also special cancelable, so if they block all of this, you can cancel into a special, like that, and make it safe. Um, his jumping, there's really nothing special about his jumping light or his jumping medium, unless his jumping light, that's his jumping medium. His jumping heavy, however, is, ve is an extremely good air-to-air -air poke. As you can see, he swings his bow. That extend, that hitbox extends quite far beyond him. So if somebody's trying to jump in on you and do, any do anything, if you just throw that out when you're jumping back, chances are they're going to run into it. Uh, also, as you saw, it's special cancelable as well. So I actually use it um, to like jump through that, and it helps you like with your timing of when to shoot the arrows as well. So you don't just like shoot them when you're coming up, and then you shoot them way the hell over the person's head. That also helps with timing, that's just that's how I do it. His jumping S is good for jumping in, has a very deep, very good a downwards hitbox, um, and has a decent amount of hits, so you can combo off of it. So that's his normals, uh, his regular normals, his chainable normals. His other notable normal is his standing heavy. He just shoots an arrow. Um, a couple, about three different properties you need to be aware of. The first of which is very simple, you can special cancel it. So you can just use that to just, you know, shoot more arrows, etc. with, uh, with Hawkeye. So it helps the zoning a little bit. The second part has to do with that. I don't know why this is how it is, but try and see, see if you can find a difference in these two moves right here. Just tell me if you see anything. Anything at all. Any difference between those two? Did you see any difference in any of those shots? I sure as hell didn't. But for some reason, see as you see, normally, again, special cancelable. If you go back and do it... You can't special cancel it. I don't have a damn clue why, but that's just how it is. So you need to be aware of that, that you can't, you know, don't hold backwards when you're using that move or else you're not going to be able to special cancel. Uh, the other asterisk that you got to add in here, you can charge his arrows. So that basically turns into triple arrow, more or less. You can also aim it, so you can aim it up. Oops. You can aim it up or you can aim it down. I don't know why you would aim it down. I guess maybe if you, like, want to try and aim at somebody that has a small hitbox like Arthur, but then you have to be right there. I don't know why you would ever use... Well, I've actually never used this and never seen anybody use it. But, for instance, I could see it used, like, um, if somebody's kind of jumping, like, you have a projectile assist that, like, covers the mid-screen, then you can kind of use that against somebody that's, like, trying to jump or whatever, etc. Kind of useful for that, but overall, never really seen it used, but still, it's there. So those are all the properties of his heavy, uh, normal. So now let's go into his special moves. The first of which is just basic zoning stuff. It's quarter circle forward moves. You have triple arrow. Uh, and you can also use all of these in the air. As you can see, you can use every single one of them in the air. So, you saw the triple arrow. Very basic projectile. Pretty damn quick. Decent durability. Probably the one you're going to be using the most. However, please do not turn into one of those players that only uses triple arrow. Because it does lose to a fair amount of projectiles out there. So he can be beaten using that. 
Um, so I mean, you wanna you wanna know when to use which move because they all every single one of his projectiles has a use. Very good for different situations. So the second one is his medium one, dead arrow. As you can see, it kind of locks them in place for a while. Um, when they're like that, actually, when you hit them grounded, it's not as good. Because one thing I'll actually have to do this X Factor to show. Well, I can just have him jump and hope I can time it correctly and not make myself look like a complete douche. Oh my god, it's a floaty S jump. But as you can see, when you hit them there, they kind of fall down a little bit like that, right? Far easier. Wow, I suck. Far easier to do, but apparently not easy enough for me. <laughs> to confirm off of this, when they're in that state. Far easier to loop as well. See, like, when they're grounded, it's that the loop is actually a lot harder to do. But you can do it. Man, see. You can loop, I believe, four times outside. Well, I can't say this for certain because I four times is the max that I have gotten outside of X Factor. Um, but it's just like I said, when they're standing, it's harder to do um, full screen. When they're standing, it's easier to do full screen. See, I can't even do. I, okay, I just got it right there. Easier full screen to do it when they're jumping and they're in that state. Easier to do mid screen when they're standing like that. Just something to keep in mind. So, that's his dead arrow. You can also, I mean, you can also obviously kind of like, oops, that's the wrong one. You can get a combo off of it like that as well. They are hittable during that by normals. So if you're close enough, you can confirm it into a full combo. Uh, so his other one is heavy, piercing bolt. Now this is an odd projectile. I don't understand the terminology behind it perfectly. Because it's, I, I'm pretty sure it's actually entirely unique to the game in that basically for those of you that don't know anything about zoning or projectiles in this game every single one of them has a set amount of points from one to ten called durability and then if you know when two projectiles clash the durability is judged so let's say a move with two durability runs into a move with five durability the move with five durability will cancel out the one with two and that move now has three durability left that's how it works so if it runs into another projectile now with three durability, those two projectiles nullify each other and they just go away. That's how projectiles work in this game. Piercing Bolt is odd in that it has its own durability rating, but there's actually no... I have not seen any projectile in the game that it doesn't just nullify completely. Well, I mean, there's one I'm actually going to show you. I'm actually lucky it gave me Arthur on Random Select. I'm going to show you the only projectile I know of so far that I've seen it doesn't just nullify completely. But most projectiles, it just blows through, kills them, and continues. Like, it just, it doesn't lose any of its effectiveness, doesn't lose any, so just, so you can see again, three hits, 149,000 damage, right? So let's go ahead and throw Arthur's Lances. Those are pretty damn good projectiles in the game. They're very good projectiles. One of the best. Just nullified them completely. Did the same amount of hits, did the same amount of damage. It's unique. It just, it kill pretty much, it's one of the best anti-zoning tools in the game. The only projectile I have ever seen that it doesn't just nullify completely is, again, Arthur's. This thing. That thing has ridiculous priority. It's like, I think it has 10 durability points. One of the best projectiles in the game. And so, you know, we show that again. That's the only projectile, like, as you see, it just keeps going. That's the only one I've seen that it, Piercing Bolt doesn't just nullify. I'm sure there's more out there. But that's the only one I'm aware of. So if you're against another zoner, Piercing Bolt is by far one of the best tools you can use against that. Um, I'm trying to think of any other properties I should mention with that. Nothing really else. I mean, it also does incredible chip damage. So even if like they just block it, it's still, like I said, it does incredible chip damage as well. So it's good in basically any kind of situation you should try to mix it up so it's not just like oh you're just gonna keep throwing triple arrows and those are fairly easy to dodge if you know what they're gonna be trying like the trajectory of them what they're trying to be going with so mix those up so now outside of those you have his sure you can motion moves so you have this one exploding arrow as you see it sticks in the ground eventually it blows up if it hits them it'll just blow up immediately whether they block it or they get hit by it it blows up immediately but that's good because i mean number one if you land it close, I mean, Hawkeye is not affected by it at all, but if you land it close enough to them, you can actually use it for somewhat decent, like, mix-up or, you know, 
pressure that you otherwise would be unsafe, but is safe because of the exploding arrow. Um, so it's decent. It's best on incoming characters when you can land, when you can place it like right where they would be landing, and then you can run whatever mix-up you want. Then you have. I'm not honestly. I'm not entirely sure what the purposeful like different large difference is between these two. I mean, they both have kind of like as you can see. I feel like the triple piercings kind of comes inwards more. But, I mean, they're both fairly similar. So I'm not entirely sure what the, like, intended difference was between those two. Or how you would pick between using them. Because they're both kind of the same. But those are, I mean, those are his other moves. So, go ahead and experiment for yourself. Now have his quarter circle back moves. Now, alone, they just do, like, various kind of maneuvers. So, as you see, this is the light one. This is the medium one. This is the heavy one. He just kind of does this different moves however all of those have the same follow-ups you can do depending on either whether you hit light medium or heavy so if you do the light one you get poison tip if you do the medium one you get this uh ice shot and then if you do this one you get like piercing you get uh whatever those are called like a piercing shot or whatever they're called um if you if you are in the middle of using his light one or his heavy one his heavy flip this is actually called i think trick maneuver or trick shot um so let's actually find that out we're, we're going to find out what it's called exactly. Trick Maneuver, all right. So, um, if you're doing the light one or you're doing the heavy one, all of those shots will OTG. Um, the light, well, I'll just show you. Basic OTG, it just pops them up a little bit. You can't super cancel off of that, so you can get a gimlet off of it. Oh my god, that misses on Arthur mid-screen. Alright, we're gonna get Arthur out of here so this is all easier for me. So as you see, that one ground bounces. However, it is odd in that you can't... The easiest way to probably do this is to do it off of a ground throw. You can still... There is a point in time where it will still hit, but it will no longer ground bounce. So you have to be doing trying to do that as quickly as you possibly can in order to get that ground bounce. And then the same basic same basic thing behind his other one. Behind that one, it's just it's an LTG. It does more damage than his poison shot, so it's kinda like if somebody's on like just the slightest amount of health and you don't think that the poison shot will do the necessary amount of damage, use the heavy follow-up instead because it does more damage. Um, the poison one is the ideal one for any other situation because I'll actually turn off health recovery really quickly so you can see I am on the wrong page. So you can see their health go away. So just wait. All right. What the hell? Oh, that's... I'm stupid. I was hyper. So as you can see, their health is just slowly draining away there, right? It lasts for a decent amount of time. As you can see, She-Hulk's losing a lot of health. Um, it does go away eventually. It doesn't last forever. There are two ways it can go away. The first of which is it just goes away on its own, as you saw. The other method is if you get hit. If they hit you at all, I believe it's... Actually, let me check this real quick. Okay, so poison will only go away if you actually get hit. Let me just poison her again. So there you go. As you see, it's now gone. Those are the two methods that you can use, that the opponent can use to get rid of the poison. So those are his trick maneuvers, whatever, etc. Um, now you have his hypers. So the first one, and the one you've probably seen the most of, Gimlet. It is extremely fast. It is also extremely unsafe, so, like, you do not want to use it from, like, here. Or even, like, mid-screen against a bunch of characters, because most characters from mid-screen will just be able to dash up and punish you for it. Um, however, it's extremely good if you see somebody, like, trying to air dash towards you, trying to zone you, etc. Gimlet is an extremely effective tool against that. Um, unfortunately, there are ways around it because it tracks the opponent where they are the second you hit the hyper. So there are ways, like, if Wesker does a gunshot teleport and you react to the gunshot, his teleport will actually bring him away from the shot and you, the shot will whip him. Um, you can actually hard tag in a character if, you, if they're grounded and they're not in the middle of anything. They can actually, you can hard tag in and the character coming in will dodge the gimlet and they can actually even potentially punish you at that point. Uh, just various things like that that you got to be aware of. Um, what was the other... There was some other way... That somebody used to get away from it. Oh, DH scene would also work. Like if somebody's in the air doing a hyper and you try to hit them with a gimlet, 
they can DHC into a character and they will come in on the ground and the Gimlet will whiff. That kind of a deal. So, Gimlet is not just like an all-purpose, this will work no matter what, but it is still a very good tool if you know it's going to hit. The unfortunate part is, as you can see from the damage right here, so as you see, I just did 250,000 damage, right? Let's just go into... I did the wrong move. It's a basic combo, right? It only did 99,000 damage. It didn't even hit 100,000. It gets hit hard by damage scaling. That's the biggest problem. That's one of the biggest problems with Hawkeye is that his combos do very little damage. Um, but yeah, so that's Gimlet. His other one is sure you can level one. Scatter shot. As you can see, not that great in the corner. If you get it mid-screen, much better. And you can also, even better than all of that, you can actually follow it up with a Gimlet. I know there's a way. I actually missed it entirely right there. Try to get fancy. There's a way to follow it up with a regular arrow shot. I do not know it yet. But as you can see, you can follow that up with a Gimlet as well. So that is my preferred method of D8. Well, it depends on the uh, hyper before it. But for instance, like, I use Spencer Hawkeye a fair amount. So if you hit a bionic arm with Spencer, you can DHC in the super scatter shot and then follow up the super scatter shot with the Gimlet as well. Um, so it's very good for DHC and it's also safe because the second the uh, animation for the hyper is finished, those shots come out. They're going to be coming out no matter what. You can be punished by somebody throwing you, so you have to be careful about using it too close. But as long as you're within like about this range right here, unless they have a really fast command grab, you should be pretty much safe. Um, so it is it is a way to DHC and safe for something like that. His other one is his level 3, very basic. Um, I mean, it's just a level 3. It's a level 3 that does damage. The thing that you should be aware of, as you can see right here, it does this cloud, right? That cloud sticks around for a fair amount of time. So it's not like you actually... The hitbox to it is not the arrow that he shoots. It's actually the cloud that appears afterwards. So people can actually, like, if they fall into the cloud, if they don't block, they'll actually get hit by it, etc. I've actually kind of mistakenly, um, you know, like, reacted to somebody's teleport. But because they teleported, it auto-corrected me. So I got, um, I got his level 3 instead of his gimlet. And because of that teleport, they land in the cloud. And they actually get hit by the level 3. So... It, the hitbox does stick around for a little bit of time, not a long time, but uh, there's a decent amount of time to it that some people just kind of stupidly fall into. I would not advise using it randomly just to think like, ah, oh, I wonder if they'll fall into this, because it's extremely unsafe. But still, funny when it happens. Um, so yeah, that's more or less Hawkeye. I mean, there's not really... I mean, teams you can build around Hawkeye, mostly you don't really... He doesn't really need much. I mean, obviously, you can use a projectile assist to augment his uh, offense. You can use an OTG. Let's actually see. Did they give me his OTG assist? Of course not. Well, he doesn't use a wall bounce, so you can have a wall bounce assist. You can use that to extend combos as well, that kind of a deal. Um, but really, he doesn't really need an assist. It's just basically things that you think will make your preferred play style of choice even better. So, you know, like maybe you want to zone with him. Having a good get the hell off me assist would be good like maybe Hagar or like maybe Hulk's anti-air that kind of a deal um but I mean like I said he really doesn't need anything it's just whatever uh will help your preferred play style um I don't, I don't really think there's much else to say I should have actually mentioned his level three it is an OTG so you can hit an OTG um Pretty sure that's it. Did I mention that Gimlet is not an OTG? I did not. Gimlet will hit everywhere but OTG. That is the only place it will not hit is if somebody's on the ground. Um, so like, you know, we do all that, etc. As you can see, it goes through him, but it still doesn't hit. Otherwise, anywhere else on the screen, as long as they are not uh, knocked down, it'll get it'll get hit by it. So that's pretty much everything to do with Hawkeye. Hope this helps you. I mean, he's a pretty basic character. Not difficult to use, not difficult to learn. Uh, just the most difficult thing is learning when and how to properly use his projectiles to effectively zone with him. Um, one thing I would highly advise you actually learn is 
using this. It's actually extremely fast. Like that kind of a deal. And it's actually much faster than using his triple arrow. Um, so, if you can get used to it, I don't I literally ever see anybody ever use this roll. But that helps his zoning so much. It also helps because if you want to get in a little bit, as you can see, he's moving forward. He's just slowly moving forward. Eventually, he'll reach you. Oh, we got that stupid no ground bounce thing. But yeah, that's my advice. Learn to use that roll because it's fast, it's very good, and I'll never see anybody use it, and you should. Um, so yeah, Hawkeye. I hope this helped y'all.